Love walks into my house and turns the lights back on. Love walks into my doubts when trust is all but gone. Love runs into my heart and tears the finish line. Love runs into my scars and heals them every time, every time. Love makes me a dancer when I can't feel the beat. Love leads my soul so far to worlds I'd never find. Love is brighter. Everybody, welcome to another live stream Tuesday night, night two of our five days of worship challenge. Uh, man, last night was really, really good. Uh, I am just excited to be diving into night two. Um, it is, uh, oh my, okay, hold on, let me turn that off. Yeah, I'm just pumped. It's uh, I got a lot of great feedback from you guys last night and today, and I thank you for that. So glad that people are uh, realizing that this is fairly relevant in their lives, and we haven't even gotten into what we're actually going to be trying to accomplish in the midst of all this. So I'm looking forward to uh, to moving on. Okay, so let's. Um, what's up, Peggy? What's up, Denise and Jess, Ray, Bianca? Samantha, uh, prayers up for you. Hope you feel better. 
Uh, there's a, a woman that tuned in last night t- named Diane. If we could pray for her as well. She's not feeling sick. Uh, she's feeling sick tonight. What's up, Terry and Gregory? Good to have you guys here. Debbie, Brandy, Belinda, Elisa, Jean. Good to have you. Uh, yeah, so let's get into some worship. And then we'll get into more of uh, the book that we're walking through and the message that it has for us. But God, tonight, we just welcome you here, Father. We thank you that we can come together on a Tuesday night on Facebook and YouTube and just lift up uh, your name in the midst of it all. God, I pray that you just kind of set aside the distractions, help us to just, just take a breath and just listen as you speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's uh, let's jump into it. Um, yeah, what's up, James? Hey, Deanna. Hey, Michelle. Louder than my unbelief's 
If you've got a prayer request tonight, uh, be sure to just post them up in the comments. We'd love to be praying with you and for you. That's what we do in our community. Uh, we just got a, a great crew of folks that are praying for each other and with each other. And so some of the emails that I got over the last 24 hours were pretty heavy. And um, I'm just looking down at the other half of this bridge here. And uh, it says, you split the sea so I could walk right through it. And maybe that's the only line that's going to fall into your soul tonight to give it some rest. But if that's the one, then that's why you're here, okay? Let's sing this together. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and see. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. If you believe that tonight, put it in the comments. Come on. Let's sing this out. My heart will 
Well, how's everybody doing? How we doing over here? Doing pretty good. Got a good crowd here tonight. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Facebook? Good to have you guys here tonight. Um, so I could have kept going, but let me let me stop there, and we can kind of lean into uh, a little bit of what um, a little more of of what we want to chat about this week. Sound good? You guys okay with that? Um. Let's see. Let me just check out your comments here. You are welcome, Melanie. Hang on, let me uh let me move to a different piece. Yeah, let me go to that, sorry. So much better. What's up, James? How are you tonight from California? Um, okay, great. So Yeah, uh, thank you, Terry, for posting that up. If you have prayer requests tonight, please just keep them rolling in the prayer in the comments there, and we'll be praying for you. There's folks online that want to pray for you, so uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, well, hopefully you guys um, were able to take a little time today to just kind of sit back, maybe take a minute, and uh, just rest. Let your minds rest. As we spoke about this last night, I wanted to just kind of um, check out the devotion from today that I had sent out. Where is it here? Yeah, tonight we're going to be talking a little bit about acceptance, I think, if we get to it. I'm pretty sure we're going to get to it. And so I hope that... Uh, you guys had a minute to kind of think about these questions. If you didn't get the devotion today, that means you're not on our email. Uh, you're not on the list. So let me just give you the uh, the address. Just go to worshipchallenge.com, worshipchallenge.com, and uh, give, just put in your first name and then your email address. And then tomorrow morning, you'll get the devotion for the day and then the invite for tomorrow night. Okay? Uh, but chatting a little bit about acceptance 
Oh, I want to read the questions. So here, here are the questions that I posed this morning in our little devotion. Do you feel accepted all the time? What happens when you don't feel accepted? How can you introduce God into those situations? And then think of ways that you can help others feel accepted. Right? So last night we were chatting a little bit about... You know, let me just roll through some of the notes here. And we started talking like the, the, the we started talking about rhythms last night, right? Talked about storms, about rhythms, about time, and about Jesus and how he fits into all of it. And then we started talking about time and about habits. And and that I love this quote from Aristotle: "We are what we repeatedly do," and how important habits are in our lives. How important it is to just kind of kind of give us some foundation, breakfast, lunch, dinner, work, you know, devotions in the morning, going out for a walk, getting exercise, all that kind of stuff. These are habits that we build. And then this quote that I loved was the way to survive the waves is to keep the beat of your heart in rhythm with the one who walks on water. And then we talked a little bit about the rat race and about the craziness of it. And do we really want to be a part of it? Sometimes we have to be a part of it, but other times we can step away. We talked about Adam 1 having this desire for conquering and creating and controlling. And then Adam 2, who is uh, more of the guy who hangs back and needs to just kind of be led to the garden was one of the examples that we had. And he's called to serve humbly. Adam walks with God. Adam too walks with God in the cool of the day. He yearns for relationships. He longs to connect with his maker. And we spoke a little bit about how in each of us, there are Adam ones and Adam twos, and we have to have both of them. We just have to have both of them. And so we're going to continue to chat a little bit tonight. We're, we're walking through for you guys that weren't with us last night. Uh, we're walking through this book. It's called Survival Guide for the Soul. And it's by a guy named Ken Shigematsu. And uh, it's a great, great read. So I highly encourage it. I've been kind of tossing it around for the last like year, a year and a half, just kind of reading bits and pieces. And then I finally just really started getting into it. And so we ended last night chatting about St. Augustine. And he has this quote that says, Our hearts are restless until they rest in you. And Augustine, I didn't know this, but he was kind of a wild man in his younger days. And it was a long time coming uh, when he started his relationship with God. It was a long stretch of time and walk and just being wooed by the Father. And he was kind of living the life. He was just kind of going out and doing his thing. And, and then he lovingly felt this pull from God to kind of just slow down a little bit, to become more contemplative. And he was quoted at that time as saying, <laughs> make me pure, he would pray, but not yet. <laughs> he knew that it was coming, but he wasn't quite, quite ready to take it there. And yet, when he surrendered to the Father, he said that he was saved from worldly ambition. And it's important to talk about this idea of worldly ambition. Uh, Melissa, the book... Here's the title again, Survival Guide for the Soul. It's available on, on Amazon, <clears throat> but I also bet that your local library will have it as well. So check there first, get it for free. So Augustine, this, this, this idea of worldly ambition and kind of his desire to step away from it was really a strong idea. And it's, it's something that kind of changed his life. And this story of Augustine, it, it is a good one. It teaches us a few things, but the main thing that it brings forth is this. Surrendering our lives to Christ not only radically recalibrates our desires, it also brings us into a more, not less, fulfilled life. When we look back, we find that God's ways are much better than our own. Isaiah 55, 9 says this, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. 
So God, believe it or not, God has a plan <laughs> for each one of us. He's got a plan and he loves us. But what about the times when we don't feel like we're loved? When we forget that he loves us as much as he does, right? I, I almost, maybe I'll play undertow on the way out of here today, but I almost played that song and that song is all about just getting caught up in all that the world throws at us. And sometimes we just don't feel like God is loving us. We've all experienced an awareness of God's love for us. We've sensed it as a new follower of Jesus. We've sensed it during a breakup, at a bus stop, when you're on a jog. Sometimes it's just overwhelming, right? Sometimes we just get that moment where we're just like, Man, I really feel the presence of the Father here now. Maybe it's during a worship moment. Maybe it's when uh, you're at church. Maybe it's in a conversation with somebody. But the thing about those, those moments are they're not happening all the time, and our memory is short. And so there are many days when we just forget how much we're loved and how much God cares for us. And then what do we do? We start to rely on our own strength, our own feelings. We start to rely on what the world defines as love, right? We seek success. We long for more and more of it to make us feel validated. The great theologian Paul Tillich tells us that we must accept the fact that we are accepted. Here's that quote again. We must accept the fact that we are accepted. When someone looks at the notes that Paul has when he's preaching this particular topic, you'll find in the margin there's this quote, and he says, this is for me, and he has an arrow pointing to that line. We must accept the fact that we are accepted. That is a hard thing to do. I could stop the live stream right now because that is a message in itself. So it brings about all these questions. Do you accept the fact that you're accepted? Do you claim the fact that you are the beloved? Do you live as a daughter or a son of grace? We, we may say to ourselves, I want to, I really do, but how do I get there? How do I accept the fact that I'm accepted? How do I even come to grips with this thought? One way to do it is just to embrace spiritual practices that create space for God in our lives. These habits leave us feeling less restless, more comfortable in our own skin, and we are stirred to a deeper state of gratitude for the grace that we have been given. Right? Just taking the time to spend it with the Father. We don't feel the need to always validate ourselves when we're in his presence as the holy spirit works in us through these habits we are free to live from approval as opposed to for approval we live from the approval of the father he's already approved us he already he's already in love with us he calls us his beloved his son his daughter sadly so many of us live distracted and unaware of the presence of the father in our lives each and every day, and myself included. Like there are moments where I go through my day and I'm just like, I'm not feeling anything right now. And I'm sure we could go around to all, let's see how many people we got. Yeah, we got over a hundred people on here. I'm sure if we took 10 minutes and you guys started putting comments in these comments about, yeah, there are days when you're just like, what is going on? It's just like that song just said, there are days when everything seems crazed. Just read, I didn't even think about this. When every good intention does no good at all. And there are times when I just can't read the signs and every road that I travel ends at a wall. But there's hope in every prayer. I breathe you in and I find you there, right? That's what God's hoping that we do. When we run into those walls, just take a breath, right? Just breathe in and breathe out. The habit of these spiritual practices that we're going to talk through is essential to our soul's survival. I told you that we were going to get into this tonight. We're going to start, okay? 
They enable us to live freely in our new identity as beloved children of God. As we become more attentive to God's abiding presence in our lives, labels such as stupid, mistake, fraud, not enough, worthless, ugly, and loser, they just fall away. When we live in that abiding presence of the Father, those labels that the world puts on us, they just fall away. They're replaced by other words, words of truth, beloved, beautiful, blessed. These are the words that the Father speaks into our hearts, into our minds, and deeply into our souls. These are the words that we want to hear. And so the practice is, let's just start chatting about them. Richard Foster says this, the disciplines allow us to place ourselves before God so he can transform us, right? It's a transformational practice that we're starting to put into place because we want to see change in our lives. And that change is us as Christians growing more and more and more like Jesus. It's easy to forget God, especially if we're busy and we enjoy accomplishing things. We grow used to living from task to task, craving the dopamine hit that comes from the next big thing. Spiritual exercise, they kind of attune us to God's presence, acting as a sticky note and a reminder that God is with us all the time. Anybody have a sticky note on their bathroom mirror? Uh, I put one in my kid's bathroom. It must have been 15 years ago, maybe 12. And it's just a Bible verse. And it's been there for like 15 years. And it's incredible that my kids just left it there. You know, I thought they'd pull it down, but it's just there. So God is putting these sticky notes all over us. He's trying to just put these reminders all around us and saying, hey, 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 I'm here. Hey, don't forget about me. I'm with you always. I'll never leave you, right? Acts 17, 28 says, for in him we live and move and exist. That is, in him we actually have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we also are his children. Right? Some translations in that verse, they say, we are his children. We're already in his presence. In reality, the exercises tune us deeper into who he is and how he moves in our lives. Sometimes we forget that we're loved by God. A rhythm of spiritual practices help us remember to whom we belong and by whom we are loved. Putting these practices into place, they just continually remind us who he is, and that we're actually loved. When we know that we're loved, we move through life bolder because we fear failure less. Even though we still may fail, believe me, we're all going to fail. That's just part of the deal in our lives. We may still feel the sting of failure, but it's okay because we know that we're loved and that God is walking with us and loving us every step of the way, even through the failures. It's almost as if we can say, I'll be okay because I know I'm accepted no matter the outcome. That doesn't mean we should strive for failures all the time. That's not what this is about. But knowing that we're loved, even through the failures, drives us even more for the successes. When we succeed, we will recognize our success as an expression of God's grace. And paradoxically, we will grow more confident and humble. Many of us, even though those of us who intellectually believe that God is love, have difficulty truly believing that we are loved. Let me just back up a minute. We grow more confident and humble as we realize our successes. It's amazing because we realize that God is walking with us and his grace is the thing that's allowing us to continue pushing forward and moving forward and making it all happen. 
I'm going to keep going. I got a lot to say on that, but I'm going to keep going. As simple as it sounds, it's hard to believe that we are accepted. It's hard to accept that we are accepted and unconditionally accepted. Now, unconditionally, I love uh, giving some of these talks in front of my computer because I'm able to look up words that sometimes we just don't think about the meaning on. So the dictionary meaning of unconditional is this, not subject to any conditions, right? Whether it's love, support, or surrender, if something's unconditional, it's absolutely and not subject to any special terms or any conditions. It'll happen no matter what else happens. His love for us is unconditional. It doesn't matter what happens. His love for us is unconditional. It just continues. Man. Spiritual practices help our ears to open uh, to the voice that is calling us his beloved. They help us constantly know and feel and understand that we are the beloved of God. They make us conscious of it. It's almost like his love is birthed and rebirthed in us. Right? It's just over and over and over again. We get into these spiritual practices. We realize what is happening in our lives with our relationship with God. And it's almost like that love is, oh, wait a minute. He loves me. I forgot that. Yesterday when that thing happened, I totally forgot that I'm still the beloved. And then that love is birthed in us again. Ephesians 3, uh, 14 through 19 says this. <clears throat> Hang on a second. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ, right? Reminds us of Romans 8. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. All of it. As we live in the fullness of God's love for us, we are made new. So, let's talk about a few of the practices, okay? The first one um, that I want to get into, it's... Uh, if you're following along in the book, it starts on page 73. It's silent meditation. Um, Mother Teresa, he starts a chapter out like this. It's a quote from Mother Teresa and it says this. We all must take time to be silent and to contemplate, especially those of us who live in big cities where everything moves so fast. I always begin my prayer in silence, for it is in the silence of the heart that God speaks. So, let me just ask this question, right? What do you do when you wake up in the morning? What does it look like for you? Is it an immediate grabbing of the phone? Or is it a gentle, slow roll out of bed? into whatever your day looks like? Or is it checking your emails and your texts? Or, or is it immediately diving into your to-do list? Or do you start the day with some peace, some silence, maybe just lying in bed in prayer? right? Maybe just letting God into the moment of the morning. I mean, there are studies after studies after studies. I didn't even get into this, but so many studies that say our brains need a little bit of time to just 
open up for the day. And jumping right into our social media or our emails or our to-do list, it's just the, it's not the best way to start the day. How do you set a spiritual practice like that? And we've spoken about this before, developing a habit of, of peacefulness and a habit of devotions in the morning. And so we're just going to get into a little more. Barb, thank you for that comment. I am so addicted. Barb says, I'm so addicted to my phone. I can now see it's really driven me further from the Lord. It is so true. And so here's one solution to that. And I'm fighting as I say this because I know that it's hard for even me. But what I've been trying to do a little bit is end the day by just reading, right? TV off, phone down, and just read a little bit. Fiction, Bible, whatever. Just let your mind settle a little bit. And then end the day just before you go to sleep, of course, with prayer. It's a wonderful way to just end the day. But here, here's, let me just read a little bit out of the book, okay? His answer to the question, what do you do when you wake up in the morning? Well, for starters, I make a conscious choice not to check my email, my text messages, or the internet. Are these things inherently bad or wrong? No, but... I know that they will get my mind racing in different directions and my thinking will quickly become dominated by my to-do list, so I avoid my phone. Instead, at the beginning of the day, I choose to do things that help me attend to God's presence, as I will describe in more detail in the coming chapters. We're going to chat through this stuff. I begin each morning by sitting and breathing deeply for 15 or 20 minutes. I find that this practice helps me to still my busy brain. I also find that holding a phrase or a single word from scripture, such as be still from Psalm 4610 is a really great way to start or wait from Isaiah 4031 helps focus my distracted thoughts on God and primes me to notice his loving presence throughout the day. Just as physical exercise in the morning lifts my mood and permeates the rest of my waking hours, the simple practice of morning Meditation helps me to become more mindful of God and his compassionate eye watching over me as the day unfolds. Although God is with us all the time, so often we are unaware of his presence. A simple rhythm of morning meditation or pausing at brief moments in the day to attend to God nurtures our awareness of his love for us even when we are not constantly praying. Okay? That's just a touch on meditation. The next practice, what time is it? Okay, we're good. The next practice that we'll chat about is Sabbath keeping. Okay? A lot of us define ourselves by what we do and how we do it. A lot of times we define it by how well we do it. Over time, and by God's grace, we need to break these patterns of making what I do the central part of my identity. I'm going to read this again. Okay? Over time, by God's grace, we need to break the patterns of making what I do the central part of my identity. Sabbath helps us break this pattern. Now, I have a very hard time with Sabbath. Okay, I don't know if anybody else practices Sabbath. It's a wonderful thing to do. I did it this past week. It was great, but it's hard. I'm not saying any of this stuff is easy, but it it forces us to think about this stuff and forces us to really get our priorities straight, okay? Sabbath helps us become more aware of God's love for us because it reminds us that our value doesn't come from what we produce, but from the fact that I'm loved by the Father in heaven not by what we produce. Because there are six days where we are going strong and hard. And God is asking us to take that seventh and just chill. 
because he is God and we're not. It's not by what we produce, but knowing that we're loved by the Father. Just think, before we've done anything that is noteworthy, exceptional, or worthy of praise from our colleagues, God calls us his beloved. Before anything is done, God loves us. He cares for us. He's watching over us and walking with us. And we haven't done a thing yet. And we get that. His grace, Peggy said it a minute ago, his grace is greater. When we stop working on the Sabbath, we're literally saying that our worth is not based on how much we accomplish, but on the simple and glorious fact that we are cherished and loved by God. When we realize that we're loved, it's easier to take risks without a paralyzing fear of failure. We can offer ourselves from a place of gratitude and joy. So we'll talk more about Sabbath in the, in the coming days. And then we'll talk about gratitude. I'm trying to catch all your comments here. There's a lot of them. Thank you guys. It's good dialogue. I love it. Another spiritual practice that we'll chat about is gratitude. Taking time each day to thank God for who we are, what we do, and who he has made us to be. This helps us realize the good in our lives. There's plenty of bad, but we have to reset and focus in on the good in our lives. One way to put this into practice is to end your day with a gratitude list or journal. Think of three things over the course of the day that you're grateful for. They can be as simple as thanking God for a good run on a crisp morning, a good conversation with someone, a cozy home, and a comfortable bed. These are things that we can hold on to and be thankful for. When we look at the little things, we really get to hone in on God's goodness in our lives, his great love for us. Gratitude and thankfulness births humility. It kind of puts us in our place. I've been doing this for the last week. Ending the day, part of the end of the day is writing down just three. It takes like 30 seconds to just write three things down. God, I'm thankful for this. Today, one of them is going to be, I'm thankful for peanut butter. <laughs> That's how simple this has to be, right? But I had some peanut butter today and I was like, man, I haven't had peanut butter in a while. Peanut butter is amazing. Okay. If you're allergic to it, I get it. That's all good. I feel, i I, I mourn for you, <laughs> but peanut butter is really good. And so that's one of them tonight, but I've just been doing this. Just end the day, break out a notebook and just write them down. Don't write them in your phone. Just write them down on a piece of paper, get a little pad, and then you can look back on the other things. And what I found, and we'll talk about this more when we're into this section, but what I found is, um, When you get towards the end of the day, you start thinking about, oh, what am I going to write in my, my gratitude journal tonight? And so you start to bookmark things over the course of the day. You're like, oh, that's something that I want to write down tonight. And it's just a cool way to kind of go for the day. Um, we'll talk about servanthood. It's a tough one to talk about sometimes, but the reality is we do not exist for our own personal glory or fulfillment, but for the honor of God and for the benefit of others. I checked that and made sure that I got that quote right. It doesn't say for the benefit of me. It says for the benefit of others. This is very anti-worldly thinking, right? We spoke about this last night a little bit. Nike tells us, just do it. Be yourself. Be who you are. You know, all of these advertising uh mechanisms just continually it's all about us what can we do for us and Jesus is like yeah it's not really what I'm looking for it's about others what can we do for others when we serve we also discover <clears throat> that our most important calling is almost always lived out in the ordinary tasks of daily lives it's not jumping on a plane going somewhere serving yes that's all great stuff to do but most of the time, 
it's done just walking around in our daily lives. We're going to get into this a bunch more when we get into our online retreat in June when we're talking about living the love. It's not about seeking status or fame. It's about having the humble mindset of a servant, much in the way that Jesus taught us. I think the more we embrace the teachings and the example of Jesus, the more at peace we are going to be in our everyday walk in our life, right? The more we embrace the teachings of Jesus, we're going to have more peace in our lives. We can practice the discipline of service in our everyday lives, whether it be preparing family meals in your own home, right? Coaching a children's soccer team, visiting inmates in jail, or engaging in your job with a mindset of servanthood. We're walking the path of servanthood. When we walk in the footsteps of Jesus, we are pursuing a beautiful and counter-cultural greatness. It's an incredible thing. It's a great topic to chat through as well. Jesus wants us to teach, sorry, Jesus wants to teach us his way of life, how to live justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. That's from Micah 6, 8. Having the Christ-like mindset of a servant from Philippians 2.5 satisfies our longing to serve one another and to love one another. It also unleashes our passion to make a difference in the world. There's a lot to it. And so, okay, we're over an hour. Maybe we'll get into, um, how are we doing? Yeah, we still got a good crowd here. You guys into this? You good, you good with hanging for a minute? <laughs> so let me let me stop there. It's kind of an overview of where we're going to be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, probably Saturday and Sunday. But if you guys are up for it, we'll see how, how, how this goes over the next couple of nights. Because I do want to get to all this because it's there's a lot of great stuff. So tomorrow night, we'll kind of get into... Uh, the first topic, which is, which is meditation. We'll chat about that. We'll see what that looks like, how to do it, how I've been working on it for the past year or so. Um, and just kind of introduce it into our, into our daily walk. Okay. Does this sound good? So let me, uh, let me close out with a little bit of worship, if that's okay. And then we can um, call it a night. Let's see. Well, this is a good way to end. Um, with this, uh, this song, Undertow. Um, Because we're all in this place where the undertow is vicious sometimes. And that is not the way to rest our souls. And so the beauty of the song, the beauty of the idea here, when I actually sat right here and wrote it, was that even in the midst of it all, in the midst of everything that the world throws out at us, um, Jesus never lets us go. Amen?
like a ghost But he calms the storms in me I walk on water, I walk through fear My faith is strong when it appears There's no room for doubting here In the midst of these I see Thank you guys for uh, for tuning in tonight. Good to have you with us. Uh, Tuesday night to have over 100 people here is absolutely amazing. So I do appreciate you uh, supporting this and being a part of this. What's up, Liz? Uh, glad you could join us tonight. Um, see you, James. Thanks, brother. So tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, we'll do it again. All right. Uh, let me throw in just a little pitch for um, for our community. We've got uh, we have a great community, and um, this week we're trying to uh, to have at least ten people join our community. And here's what that means: you come on board over at joindaysband.com. There's a membership fee, and what that fee covers is costs to do these types of online retreats. Uh, it also covers costs for me to go out and play live shows. I play about 120 live shows a year. And what happens at those live shows is beyond anything that I could ever, ever imagine. Uh, we, um, we see lives changed. We see hearts moved. People make decisions for Christ. We see folks uh, struggling with addictions get out of those addictions. Uh, we see 
people just changed. But most importantly, we see kids' lives changing through child sponsorship. Kids getting food, clothing, clean water, and health care. And this is one of the core principles and foundations of my ministry is to help us sponsor kids like little uh, Miharetu here. It's a little boy from Ethiopia, this little kid. He's uh, 12 years old. And so how that works inside of our membership is when 10 people join our membership, we take the first $4 of your membership fee and put it towards helping us sponsor a child. And so the last time we did one of these week-long seminars, uh, retreats here, we had, believe it or not, we had 30 people join, which was incredible. So we sponsored three kids. And for you guys that are members, new, old, if you want to see those kids, they're in the child uh, sponsorship section of your membership. So you can check them out, read their stories, and pray for them. And so we got three kids that came on board and we saved three lives just by doing a week's worth of teaching on Jesus and worshiping. And so this week, I'm hoping for nothing less than more. Uh, So if you want to join us tonight, it's an incredible, incredible community of people. Uh, This is a full-time ministry for me. This is all I do. I travel from Maine to Florida and back playing shows. I do online ministry and we see lives changed because of uh, Jesus. It really is just, it starts with Jesus and everything else just falls into place. And so we're asking people to come on board and what you get. Okay. That's always a lot of people like, Hey, okay, I want to join, but like what's in it for me? Not that that should be the reason, but let me just tell you what's in it for you anyways. (laughs) So first of all, you get access to our community. Okay. People praying with you and for you. It's a beautiful thing. It's amazing to know that people are walking with you. So there's accountability inside of our membership area through our community. And then each morning you'll get a devotion, 6 a.m. We're walking through the book of John right now. So they are daily devotions based on the book of John. Uh, And then you get access to our Bible studies every week. So every week I publish a new Bible study. Right now the Bible study is just walking through the book of John as well. So we're taking 30, 45 minutes or so every week, diving into four or five verses and getting involved that way just to see what Jesus is trying to teach us so then we can take it and live it out in our lives. So that's another part of what you get. Worship videos. We have a library of worship videos in there. There's devotional videos in there as well. There's over 200 devotional videos. There's probably over 200 Bible studies in there. There's over 2,000 written devotions. So all in all, there's probably over 500 hours of content inside of our membership area. And you have access to it either through your desktop, uh, your laptop, your iPad, or your phone. There's an app that you can access that as well. And uh, you get downloads of all 19 of my albums. And depending on what level you join at, we'll send you coffee every month. We'll send you CDs each month. Uh, We'll send you t-shirts and sweatshirts and all that kind of stuff. But everything is happening over at joindavesband.com. And so tonight, I'm asking you to join, okay? Okay. This is little Miharetu. We want to sponsor this kid. I'd love to see him get sponsored between tonight and tomorrow night. And then we can start on a new one uh, and see if we can get another kid sponsored by the end of the week. So two this week would be amazing. And so what happens with our membership area is I only open it up for a couple of weeks at a time over the course of the year. So if you want to join, we're open this week and next week. And then we close the doors for a couple of months. And you can't join during that time because we want to just... Hang with the people that have joined, get to know them, make sure everything's going on, everything's cool, people understand it, and so, and then we can move from there. So, maybe tonight's the night. Maybe you've been enjoying the last two days, and you kind of like the teaching style, the worship, the community here, everything that's going on, and um, you want to join, and we'd love to have you do that. So, just head over to joindavesband.com, literally just open up a new tab in your uh, browser, whether you're on Safari or Chrome, open up a new tab, just go to joindaysband.com and, uh, you can get access right there. You can read more about it. There's a video that kind of walks you through everything going on. And then there's all these different levels that you can join at. So we'd love to have you join us tonight. Okay. Uh, and otherwise we'll see you tomorrow night. We're going to do this again tomorrow night. It's going to be amazing. Tomorrow night, we'll start talking about meditation. 
uh, and scriptural meditation and centering prayer and all of that stuff that's so powerful in our daily uh, walk with Jesus. So I can't wait to get into that. Um, any questions before I go? I'm just looking at your uh, your the comments here. Um, I'll just hang out for a minute if you guys have any questions about membership, about what we're doing, why we're doing it. Uh, just let me know. Would, would, would be great to... Um, and if you join tonight, let me know so that we can welcome you into the fold. All righty? Be so cool to just say, hey, these two or three people have joined. So great to have you with us. Um, okay. I'm just looking at your comments. Yeah, thank you, Deborah. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, Peggy. Liz. Barbara, good night. Thanks for being here tonight. Alyssa, what's up? What's up, Gene? Great. Awesome. What's up, Bethany? Thanks for being here. Okay, great. Awesome. Okay, guys. Um, let me sign off. We will uh, see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern, right here. Um, if you want to join, please do. Go to joindavesband.com. It would be amazing to have you with us. And let's see this little boy, Miharetu, get sponsored this week. Okay? Awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, hey, Ray, the new album coming out June 3rd. All right? First single from the record coming out May 3rd. So, exciting. Melissa, the, the name of the book is Survival Guide for the Soul by Ken Shigematsu. Go get it. It's a good one. Okay, guys. Uh, any other questions? Are we all good? Okay. Awesome. Great. Um, we will see you tomorrow night, okay? 8 p.m. tomorrow night, Eastern. We'll see you there. Any questions at all, let me know uh, about membership, about the study, anything going on, just shoot me an email or send me a note on Facebook or on YouTube. I think YouTube has a messenger function as well. Oh, John, uh, great question. Hey, man, shoot me an email and um, let me put my email address here. If you are already a member and you just want to sponsor a kid, um, just shoot me a note and we'll hook you up with sponsoring this little boy. That would be awesome. Okay. Um, got it? There's the there's my email address. I love the Q&A at the end of these things. It's great. So many cool things happen. Um, okay, great. Yeah, you know, I didn't even thought of that before, but um, if you just want to sponsor a child, let me know. We can hook you up with that as well. <laughs> that would be awesome. You're welcome, Gene. Thanks for being here. Hey, John, you got that email address? All right, guys. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, John. I'll shoot you a note, man. I've got your email. Hang on a second. Yeah, I've got you right here. Uh, I'll shoot you a note and we can chat about what that looks like uh, setting up your sponsorship of a child. And we'll take it there. Okay. Thanks, guys. Uh, let me pray us out. God, we thank you, Father, for another just amazing night to just kind of lean in, focus on you. And so, God, I pray for tomorrow night, for Wednesday night, for Thursday night, for Friday night. God, that you would just continue to move in and amongst us. Let, let people's hearts be softened to the idea of rest and the idea of all the spiritual practices that help us and lead us to a deeper relationship with you. And so, God, we thank you for it. We love you. Praise you. Let me just pray for a great rest this evening. You know what I mean? Pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m., okay? Have a great rest of your night. We'll see you over at joindaysband.com. See ya. Bye.